Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Regeneration Church's Noon Connection. Uh, my name is Tony. I'm one of the pastors at Regeneration Church in Scotts Valley, and today is Team Building Tuesday. Now, I've, I've not done uh, one of these Team Building Tuesdays as of yet, so uh, this will be my first time. And so with that, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, we have some of our Regen leaders watching. And if so, uh, I just want to start off by thanking each and every one of you for what you do uh, and the fact that you do it because you love God and you love his people. I know that um, this has been a, a difficult time for all of us, you know, going from face-to-face uh, -face interactions, being able to simply uh, come alongside a, a brother or sister and to, you know, to pray with them, maybe put your, put your hand on their shoulder, uh, leading Bible studies in person, teaching and interacting with our youth, and, and even being able to worship corporately together in person as one body to where we are now uh, in a matter of months to uh, doing everything online you know, sitting in front of our TVs or in front of our laptops and cell phones, all the things that only months ago our pastors were encouraging us to separate ourselves from. I find that kind of ironic, but, you know, it is what it is, and, and thank God for the technology that we have. Uh, you know, but this has been unlike uh, the way that we've ever done things before, but you know what? We're doing it. Praise God, we're doing it. So be encouraged, team, as we faithfully are adjusting and continue the work, lives are still being touched and changed. People are still being saved, and we are still faithfully heeding the call with which we have been called. And I truly, truly believe that God is pleased. You know, Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. We need to hang in there as leaders of God's people, as ministers of the gospel to his children who are young and those who are not so young. I find myself saying this a lot, but it's only because it's true. The Lord is in this with us. Uh, for those of you who are joining us and maybe are not leaders of our church, uh, well, we want to welcome you as well. This is an open group, and uh, we're glad that you are here with us. And I want to share with you uh, some of the ministries that are happening and the importance of our leaders who are heading them up. Even during this time of shelter in place, they're, they're all being done virtually. Uh, we have something going on almost every single day of the week. Uh, we have uh, our 9 a.m. prayer team, Sunday worship service. There's the town hall meeting after that. And then there's the Gen 1, our youth group. All of these are, are meeting virtually uh, online on Sundays. You know, we have the noon connections five days a week, Life Church on Wednesday nights, junior high and high school on Thursdays, men's Bible study on Fridays, ladies Bible study on Saturdays. There's life groups on various nights throughout the week. And our marriage ministry is starting up again in June. Wow. And for each of those venues, each of those events and those ministries, there is at least one or two who are heading them up. And again, it's all virtual and online. And that doesn't even include uh, our legacy group, our tech team, our worship team, our social media team. Then there's our pastors and our elders and our office staff and those who volunteer their time throughout the week to, to go to the church and do different things around there. Again, it's all leader driven. And so the question is, why? Why do they devote so much of their time and effort to accomplish these things? to make sure that these things are, are not only successful, but that they are available to the rest of us. What is it that draws them, that causes them to hang in there? Well, as a leader myself, I, I think I can speak for all the leaders at Regen. 
Uh, I believe that if you ask them, they would tell you that they do it for no other reasons than to serve God and to do it out of obedience of their love for him. They do it not only uh, to, uh, they do it to not only answer the call that that has been placed on each of their lives, but it's also how God has wired each of them. And it's, that's kind of the exciting thing about, about being in leadership, being in that ministry or in that position that God has called you to, because God has wired us a certain way. And, and so they are doing something that not only gets the mission done, but it also fulfills themselves. It brings joy to themselves. I, I think of Miss Dana and all her hard work and, and in the kids' ministry and, and all that she does, but I see that it brings, uh, brings her joy. Um, there's Ben Barber in the tech team. There's Kenny in social media. There's Josh in the worship teams. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to look too deep to see that even though it's difficult at times, they understand the importance of the ministry, but it also brings them joy. And ultimately, it brings joy to the Father. Another reason that they do it is to share their love, their God-given talents, and their abilities with people, uh, with his people, that's our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and with those who may not know him yet. And they do it willingly as leaders to allow God to use each one of these teams to further the gospel of Christ, to share the good news, to offer hope for those who may have none, and I would say to be an example for the next generation coming up. And none of us as leaders are just winging it. You know, we have, we have seen great examples along the way, but none greater than the example that we've seen in our Lord Jesus. Uh, we see one great example in John 13, verses 12 through 16. We find uh, Jesus and his disciples are in the upper room. They've finished supper. Judas has left the building, and Jesus has just finished washing the disciples' feet. Why? Why did Jesus, their leader, our Savior, God's Son, do this? Verse 12 says, So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. For those of us who have been called to be his leaders, uh, we know that we are servants first and that our calling is to serve him and to serve others. I, I want to be clear here, even though our time together right now is called uh, Team Building Tuesday, I'm not just addressing the leaders of the church. The calling that God has given us really has nothing to do with institution or denomination or even just for the leaders of Regeneration Church. Our calling as leaders is no different than the calling we have as husbands, as wives, as parents and grandparents, and even as brothers and sisters. We all are to serve one another. As a way of encouragement, Philippians 2, 1 through 4 says this, Therefore, if there is any consolation in, in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. 
So I, I want to uh, end uh, with this. You know, uh, my time in the military was uh, one of the greatest times in my life, uh, along with my conversion, first and foremost, and only second to my marriage romance to my wife, Cease. This may sound cliche, but I, I literally went into the Air Force as a boy, and I came out as a man. I never saw a battle, at least not military battle, but I knew that when I signed up that I could be in one at the drop of a hat, that I would willingly uh, go and defend my country. And when I got out, people would come up to me and, and in all sincerity, they would thank me for my service. And I would proudly, after a while, because I didn't really know how to answer for probably a couple of years, but after a while, I would proudly tell them uh, it was my honor. As leaders of God's people and of our families and of those who need Jesus, we are in a different kind of service, maybe not military, but one that does have a constant battle in it, amen? But we are in his service. And so with all of my heart, I, I wanna thank you for your service to him and to his people. God bless you, hang in there. God is still on the throne and he is still in control. Amen? Amen. Well, I pray that you have an awesome day in him. And again, just uh, keep your eyes on the Lord. Um, he is, uh, he's got us by the hand. We're in his grip and he's taken us uh, through this. Listen for the little things that we need to learn along the way. Uh, but uh, thank you again, leaders of the church and God bless you. Um, so until next time, see ya.